white people's culture. I don't know nothing about white people, what they do at night. I don't know what you wake up and do. I don't know what your, your park life is like. I don't know shit about white people outside of the festivals and the shows I've done. Right? I did not know a single white person until I was 21 years old. 21 years old is when I really met white people. I lived in a black country called Jamaica, and I lived in a very black part of the city called Carroll City of yeah. Miami. I do not know y'all white people. So I am really speaking for the black community here. And I have you no problem if white people want to include their community or their country into the conversation. That's what is all good. But be very clear. I am talking about my community because I only know my community. You know what I'm saying? And, and, I, and I believe that, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Cutting Class. I believe that your community has the same issues and that we can all have this conversation which can help all of us. But I know for a fact, when you want to talk about hiding secrets, jeez, yo, the black community, we don't talk about shit. Don't you see that it's only the other day we're talking about mental health and all of these stuff black people listening. don't just start to talk about blacks black uh african people mental health that is a new topic everyone right new that's Brand a new, new topic you know what's another new topic mm -hmm. and shout out to lady Anne because when she went online and spoke about this people were like because no one talks about it mm -hmm. sexual harassment of an abuse. Molestation. An abuse. Yes. No one wants to talk about it. Today, we're going to talk about it. Let me start with myself. Mm -hmm. I talked about my sister being a crackhead. She died a crackhead. Let me also tell you that my father sexually molested my sister. The same one. Mm -hmm. I saw him do it. I caught him doing it i saw with my eyes my dad sexually assaulting my older sister i walked back to my room And I never spoke about it. Yo, let me tell y'all something, man. Y'all see me laughing all the time because trust me, I appreciate the good stuff. One of these days, we're going to have a real conversation about the, the shit, the trauma. Mm -hmm. I believe that my sister's crack smoking is directly related to that molestation when she was 13 years old. 1,000. My brother, 1,000. 1, 1,000%. That's her way of trying to escape something from the person to, that's supposed to be protecting me the most. And this is what's happening. You're supposed to be protecting me the most. And this is what you're doing to me. So imagine what strangers are going to do to me outside yo right? my sister had her first child as a young teenager and i remember she must have let somebody in carroll city know mm -hmm. that my dad was molesting her and i remember the phone ringing house phone for people that don't remember that we used to have house phones mm -hmm. and my dad losing it my dad cursed whoever the fuck called him out for and yo i never see my dad curse like that and he was saying stuff like come kill me then come kill me then because somebody in the community was like yo we're gonna kill you 
for Melissa and that girl. And y'all don't understand how much I wish they did. I'm not talking about a stranger. I'm talking about my dad. Supposed to be the hero. The this is who I look to. I this wish is a mother. Runners. I wish they did kill my dad. I was a kid. But I heard it and I remember it. And anybody else out there that, that knows about any kind of trauma or anything shit like that, you usually don't seem to remember the good stuff as much as you remember the clarity of the bad stuff. 1,000%. 1, 1,000. I was a kid, guys. I was a kid. I, wasn't, I was maybe eight years old. Hmm. I watched my dad turn around and beat my sister so badly for that guy calling. I remember my dad saying these exact words. These exact words my dad said. He said, I don't care if they know I'm fucking you. And he said it over and over and over while he was punching my sister. And she kept saying, I didn't tell nobody. I didn't tell nobody. I've kept it a secret. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And he kept saying, I don't care if people know I'm fucking you. Tell them to come. And y'all don't understand how much I wish a motherfucking car rolled up on 183rd Street in Miami, a dude pulled out and blasted my father. I wish it more than anything on earth. But I shut the fuck up. I went back to my room. Acted like it didn't happen. doesn't happen in my house. It doesn't happen here. Most of you guys that know me personally, you also know my younger sister. I won't speak on my younger sister because a lot of people here know her personally. But if you know my younger sister, you know it's, I'm not saying anything. But those that know my younger sister, you know. I lost my sister because of crack. DMX dies because of, problem. because of a drug problem. And these are things that the people around are tiptoeing around. We're tiptoeing around it. When I became a big man, I should have I should have knocked my fucking dad out. I should have killed him. But I ignored it. Hey, you know what? We don't talk about this in the black community. Not at all, bro. It's embarrassing. 100%. It's embarrassing. Suicide. We do not talk about this in the black community. Because black people don't commit suicide. Because black people one. don't commit suicide. No. no. Rest in peace no. to my good friend, London. Everybody in Kingston, you remember London. Committed suicide. Shout out to everybody that went to Clark Atlanta University. You remember my good, good friend, oh, he committed suicide from Ghana. But black people don't commit suicide. That's what white people think. Of course it is. So we don't talk about it. We don't talk about it. Mental issues, we don't talk about it. 
Drugs, we don't, we don't talk about it. Molestation, we don't talk about it. Suicide, we don't talk about it. We tiptoe around the people that we know are going through it. Or we completely distance ourselves. We'll dismiss them by saying they're mad. You know, see, see how mad person that. You know, see, see how mad people. That dismisses the whole problem. It's no Yo, longer. Let me tell problem. you, let me tell you, muscle man. Yo, a lot of people don't know how DMX affected my life, man. Beyond his music being good. If you've ever seen me perform on a stage, you've seen me channel that DMX energy. Now do you say it, right? I do exactly the stuff that he does. If you've come to Rum and Bass on a Tuesday here in Miami, <laughs> you'll definitely agree I channel that DMX energy. We have prayers during a party. And I don't believe in no religion. But I believe in prayer. I believe in speaking positively and the communal act of speaking together in a positive manner. Words have powers. I have moments where a song will play and I'll stop it and I'll say, this song, we got to do better than this. And you'll see people be like, damn, but I love that song. And I say, I know you love that song because it hits the lower energy. It hits a lower frequency. It's easy to talk about black people killing black people and make you like it. But let it's me be real with you. Better. Every single time I hear one of those songs, every single time I see one of those moments where something happens, where some young dude kills another young dude actually in the streets raps about it in a song or when when somebody's like i'm smoking on this dude's dead body or i'm smoking on this dude's ashes or when i see or when i see um dudes join gangs this is the conclusion i've come to and we'll open this shit up if y'all don't agree with me. i have concluded That slavery still exists. Of course it does. Right here. I have also concluded that since slavery still exists, here in the mind, y'all scared of white people. Every single one of y'all are scared of white people. Unpack that, Walshie. Let's unpack that. Mm -hmm. The reason why a woman in your community can get raped, can get killed. An innocent child could get shot with a stray bullet. And none of y'all young boys go outside and protest, go outside and try to find a solution to make sure that don't happen again, protect the neighborhood, patrol the neighborhood, make sure whatever the fuck going on. The reason why y'all don't rap and talk about, oh shit, this girl that lives in my neighborhood was raped. We don't put up with that. The reason why you don't do a song about that is because you scared of white people. What they'll do to you. You scared of what a white person will do to you if you talk about upliftment and unity and defending your community with those same guns. Because you know I'm pro-gun like a motherfucker. Everybody, if you ain't got one, go get one. Don't let me show mine right now on this goddamn live. You need to go ahead and take some classes and learn how to properly use it. Properly use it. Because every single one of you motherfuckers need to go and get a gun. But to protect your family and the people that live around you. It's for defense, not offense. A lot of people have it for offense. They're going to go, they're going around and make the trouble with it. That's Yo, the problem. Let me tell you first. something, man. I realize these little black boys, they scared of white people. And I don't give a fuck what nobody want to say. I said this on Twitter today, and I'm going to say it again. 90% of rap music is whack. If y'all ain't agreeing with me, 
we'll have a moment where we can catch this fade. 90% of rap music is trash. And we're not Are talking you about it. Right now? Or this is right now, right now, right now. Right right now. now. Okay. I was okay. driving around today listening on the radio and I heard nothing but trash after trash after trash. That doesn't mean the beat ain't good. That doesn't mean the melodies ain't good. That don't mean I'm not bouncing my head and going, yeah, it's just catchy. It's the words. My lower frequency is in love with it. The words, bro. Because I come from the community where you get triggered mm -hmm. by negativity. But my higher frequency is like, this is trash. I'm going to kill a black man. I'm going to kill a black man. When I see that black man, I'm going to smoke that black man. Black man, black man. I need some hoes. I need some hoes to give me some head. Hoes, 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 give me head. I'm going to kill a black man, and I'm going to get some head. What? <laughs> song after song after song after fucking song. And whenever we hear somebody come up with a creative way of talking about they killing somebody or talk about hoes and bitches, we say, ooh. That shit fire. Shut the fuck up. That shit ain't fire. Got a question for you, Walsh. How did we get from self-destruction, Boogie Down Productions, to self-destruction in 2021? You know Where what? did all Great that question. Happen? Great question. What happened? Y'all remember when Karis One was... Y'all remember Queen Latifah? When she was rapping and, wearing, and dressing like Nefertiti? Yo, do y'all remember that? Let me tell you what happened, man. In my opinion, and I'm not mad at the record labels because it's their game and we play it. In my opinion, record labels stepped in. And because they saw so much black positivity, they got scared. They said, this is not going to work. This is not going to work. They're going to eventually create their own record labels. They're going to eventually create their own music industry. It's not going to work. Let's find the weakest motherfuckers in this. And let's get them to talk about what we need them to talk about. And make it cool. And that's what happened. Is that the branding of killing black people and calling women bitches and hoes grew and grew and grew and grew because the people who were like, yo, you want to get rich? We'll distribute this shit. We'll make sure that we'll make sure that she's had it. But you got to talk about this. Yo, look at any conscious rapper right now. Their streams are low. They probably are not on any major label and they make great music. Ask anybody to name three conscious... Ask anybody to name one. Name three conscious, name three conscious name rappers, three. yo. One, 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 bro. Let me tell and you another thing, man. These rap, hold mm -hmm. up, muscle. I was listening to the rap on the radio. And one thing I can say is Meek Mill, Rick, Rick Ross, those guys are genius rappers. Jay Z, genius rappers. And what I notice is that none of these rappers now have any quotables. Uh, you don't hear a single song today that you're like, yo, that's going to age well. Playback value, bro. Yo, in 10 years, yo, we all know DMX's words word for word. I'm slipping. I'm falling. I can't get up. We know, yo, we know DMX's songs word for word. Not a single rapper right now has anything that I think, not, not a single, sorry, major, majority, <coughs> has anything I think is going to age well. In 10 years, you're going to hear some shit, you're going to be like, man, that's some bullshit. The fuck was we listening to in 2021? The funny thing with it, just last night, we are having a conversation. I said, yo, are people still making slow jams? I remember growing yeah, up, they, bro, they having there. a slow jam clash in yeah, our house. Yeah, they're there. They're there. But you know what I'm saying? A lot of the time, it's, it's also very um, derogatory towards women. You rarely get a song that's like, you remember, you remember um, 
Let me rub you up and down. What are you telling the words right on? You know what I'm saying? Or, or the songs mind. that were like, let me take care of you. Let me, you know, you rarely get those songs now. Really, really, really. It's a rare, it's a rare yeah. thing. When I speak to people, what I think this is what happened. The artistic thing of saying where I need to find another word instead of fuck you. And I right. need to find something else instead of that. That became too hard for a lot of people. Where let they me just tell you something, say, man. Let me Yo. fuck you. Muscle, me and you did a whole show about how young people do not know what love is. Now, I know that was a controversial show, very controversial uh, thing. But you know what I'm saying? I stick to it, man. I stick to it. I stick to it. Mm -hmm. I do not believe that young people know how to love. They have so much distractions and so many carrots dangling them towards super weird ways of being in a relationship. And being, some people say it's evolution. Oh, they've evolved. I say it's devolution and devolution because how are you going to go into a, into a, yo, I see people at dinner on their phone. You know what I'm saying? I see people, um, yo, it's the weird, we're in the weirdest times, man. You know? Just yesterday, again, in the conversation, I was telling people like, even this situation, going to go off to come right back on. This whole pandemic situation we're in, if you really look at it, this situation isn't about people 18 and over, you know, because we're going to go back to our old ways come next year if everything opens up. Right. This whole situation is to shape the mind of the kids. When right. kids have to go to school, they have to wear a mask all day. They have to sit behind plexiglass. This so means you do what's said and you don't move or else you could potentially lose your life. You That's understand? where we're at. That's what I'm talking. We're, we're come all right. So bring that to music. <laughs> Who are the warriors? Where are all the warriors at? Little motherfuckers, you got the guns. You got all the guns. You showing for, all the guns. The you mandem, snitching. Bro. You snitching on yourself. For the mandem, for the mandem. You snitching on yourself and showing all your guns. You talking about all the drills you've done. Where the fuck are you? What what the what's the what, where the warriors at? Nah, bro. They they're there, but they're there for the. Is everybody wearing the a mask and, and being in behind plexiglass in in, in 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 the gang? I know a motherfucker that's. I don't know his little bitch ass actually. I know of his little hoe ass. This little bitch motherfucker, that that just turned crip when he like a a grown man in Miami. Mm. All right, folks. And I feel sorry for the girl that's dating this dude. If ladies, let's ladies, if your man lives at home with his mom, claims that he's a scammer, claims that he's a crip. And if you know anything about gangs here in Miami, there is no cripping blood situation here. He has no ops. Yeah. Okay, he has no ops. He has no one outside that he got to be like looking around the corner. First of all, he lives in a five bedroom house <laughs> with his mom. If wow. this dude is not the corniest dude to you, we need to have an open dialogue about what our ladies believe are, are I'm sorry, are, are accepting. Mm -hmm. And we need to talk about it. But I'm going to let one of the females lead on that one. But ladies, this is weird. It's weird. It's weird. And he's going to be a rapper now, talking about he a rapper. And I'm just like, what a little bitch. What a little bitch. Capping, lies, live with his old girl. He got a little raggedy, some little raggedy hoes that like him. Yo, my man. It's like I just want to shake him up and be like, yo, be a man. And that's another thing, man. Yo, today, DMX, yo, I got two things I want to say. Yo, one, we lost one of the last alpha males. In the business. Hold on, though. Hold on, though. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me say it. We lost one of the last alpha males, right? Mm -hmm. But we never talk about, let me say it again. 
we lost losing DMX. We lost one of the last black alpha males. Mm -hmm. There's a few left. Losing DMX as one of the last black alpha males also makes me say, y'all don't know how difficult it is to be a black alpha male. In this business. To be a black alpha male in 2021 is the most difficult fucking thing in the world because everybody around you is some, is, is some fake capping, old puss ass, bitch ass, sure, sure. fuck sure, boy, flaky ass, shaky ass, old twerking ass bitch. You're completely surrounded by motherfuckers who don't stand on shit that matters. And it just gets heavier and heavier and heavier because more and more fuckboys seem to be arising than real warriors. Yeah, you have to remember, we're... we're 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 in the middle of cancel culture. Once you go against what's popular, you're the bad guy. You're the problem. You're you're going against what everybody else believes. But everybody else only believes it because everybody else believes it and you're afraid to say what they want to say. Correct. You understand? That's why that's why everything is the way it is. And let me say this also. There's space in the universe for the alphas and the not so alphas the betas the gammas be yeah the betas the gamma men yo there's space for everybody everybody has a role but you see the alpha males and i consider myself one and i know that's probably the last thing an alpha male does is say that but i looked at dmx and i was like damn the way he moved everything about him but it was so fucking rough it was so hard when you're looking around and you're in a room of people who just be on bullshit. You didn't see, I just posted the thing today. I posted the um the industry. You remember that um that um poem he did on deaf deaf comedy damn. Yeah, poetry. of course, man. It was a classic. It was called the industry. It was a classic. The yes. Industry, man. Everyone should and go that, see it. What you said? It encompasses everything he was saying in that poem right it's there. It's a classic. Everything. Yeah. Understand. Yo, at the end of the day, what we have is a bunch of teenagers and young adults and dudes up to their 30s who are destroying our community, destroying the black race, destroying the women, and we're not talking about it. Just like I told y'all earlier, my sister was a crackhead. She died a crackhead. I never talked about it. My dad molested my sister. I saw him. He then beat her up because she told somebody. After years of doing it. And I said nothing. I sat down in my little kakakana. I just shut the fuck up. Because that's what I was taught to do. Shut the fuck up. I would love to now take some conversations from some people, Muscle. Yeah. Anybody, first of all, who got a problem with anything I said, I'd like for you to step up first. I've got much respect to you. The floor is yours. But y'all say... What we want first is a female. Especially, I want to see it from a female's perspective, what they think is really happening in the community. So send a request and we'll bring you on live right now. A, a female. That's what I want to hear from first and then we'll talk to the guys. There's guys here right now. I want to see from a female because even, let's go even deeper right now. When you're on the road and somebody gets killed, a guy gets killed, it's the guy, he's gone. You know who has to bear that burden now? The women, his mom, his baby mother, his wife. Y'all don't his understand sister. the burden of doing dumb shit when you are gone because of prison or death y'all don't even understand the strain that that put on the community on your immediate family 
You're killing us. Little mother.